Recap in minutes, in today's video, we will be enjoying action drama thriller film, entitled Silent Trigger. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with Waxman waking when he hears the phone ringing. Waxman lets his phone ring a few times while he recalled a mission several years ago. At that time, he's with a woman named Clegg, who serves as a spotter, in an old abandoned bell tower. She's doing the calculations, judges the wind, and provides the necessary data to ensure the sniper, Waxman, hits the target. Later, their target approaches the kill zone as he prepares the bullet in the gun's chamber. Their target is a female politician, and when they get the green light to shoot, the politician raises a baby from the crowd. However, he hesitates to shoot because of the baby. Nevertheless, his superiors order him to open fire, despite being urged by Clegg as well. So, their superior commands Clegg to terminate him for failing to comply with the order, but she still doesn't and continues to urge him to shoot. Suddenly, a helicopter carrying armed troops arrives and shoots at their location. Clegg descends from the tower while Waxman is still up there, avoiding the gunshots that cause the politicians and the crowd to run and hide. As the armed men descend from their helicopter, they spot Clegg and chase after her while shooting. They defeat the attacking force, and Waxman shoots the pilot dead, causing the chopper to crash into the bell tower. Currently, two male security guards are in a building still under construction, namely senior security O'Hara and a new security guard, Klein. Even though Klein is new, he doesn't like O'Hara because he insults and demeans him. While the guards are inside the building, Waxman tries to infiltrate it. With his years of experience, it's easy for him to get in and hide in a safe place to work out his plans. He then deactivated one of the CCTV cameras to distract the guards. On the other hand, Klein notices the broken CCTV, and it goes back online, but he still rushes to check out the situation outside the building. Since lightning was raining heavily that night, Klein assumed the CCTV must be damaged. He checks out the level for any intruders, unbeknownst to him, Waxman is already inside. When Klein is about to return inside the building, he is surprised by a woman's arrival in front of the building's gate. Klein immediately approaches the woman and asks her purpose for coming there. The woman turns out to be Clegg, who says she got assigned to fix the communication and security systems in the building. Since Klein's superiors didn't inform them of Clegg's arrival, he then reports this to O'Hara before allowing Clegg to enter. After seeing Clegg as a woman, O'Hara immediately asks Klein to take her into the building. After that, O'Hara escorts Clegg to the top floor using the elevator while trying to seduce her. However, her witty answers annoy him, so he pushes her against the wall. Because Clegg isn't just any woman, she points a gun at O'Hara and threatens him. O'Hara instantly surrenders and is annoyed that she has overcome him. Hearing this from O'Hara, Klein intends to report Clegg to the police because she has a gun. However, O'Hara stops him and says they're the cops in that building. Meanwhile, upstairs, Clegg is surprised by the appearance of Waxman and immediately covers her mouth, putting a knife against her neck. He says a code, and she replies with her number. A flashback occurs to their mission, as Clegg runs to their primary extraction point, she rushes to report to her superior about the failed mission. However, not long after, Clegg is surprised by the appearance of Waxman there because it turns out he has survived the explosion. Waxman immediately seizes Clegg's radio and throws it away. He orders her to prepare to go to the secondary extraction point, and she tells him it's her very first mission. He then tells her there must have been a significant operational screw-up, as the chopper somehow found them. Waxman said that there were two possibilities for their mission's failure. He believes their enemy must have set them up or managed to track their whereabouts via radio. Therefore, he forbids Clegg to use the radio. Back in the present, Clegg explains she's assigned as a spotter to accompany Waxman in carrying out the mission. On the other hand, Waxman questions why their superior reassigned them together after what they experienced years ago. However, she replies casually by saying that she fits in with anyone and that he isn't special. Suddenly, in the middle of their conversation, O'Hara came back there. But since Clegg had locked the door first, even O'Hara couldn't get in there, and he left in annoyance. Waxman confiscated her gun, and they both began to prepare their respective weapons and equipment and determine the exact location to launch their attack. They then engage in conversation in which they don't know their superior's identity and face, even though they have worked for the secret agency for years. After that, Waxman goes to the roof of the building to monitor the location he'll use to kill his target, whose car will cross an overpass two kilometers from the building. Later, he sees something suspicious in another building but chooses not to overthink it. Meanwhile, Klein looks suspicious when the lights on the roof of the building flash brightly and thinks that someone is there. So he rushes upstairs to check things out. At the same time, 
a drugged up O'Hara puts on body armor to go to Clegg. Another flashback occurs after a long journey, Waxman and Clegg rush to the second pickup location using a map. They see a car parked at the forest's edge on the way. Immediately, Waxman runs to beat the driver and his partner, steal the car, and continue their journey. In the present, Clegg grabs a hidden gun while Waxman climbs up the stairs to the roof. On the other hand, she notices someone is using the elevator and is about to head to the top of the building. She rushes to take action, so Waxman doesn't get caught. When Klein finally gets there and is about to open the door leading to the roof, Clegg interrupts Klein's inspection. She says that she's ensuring the lighting system is running normally. Then, several lights in the building turn on. Meanwhile, Waxman sets bombs in several places, including in a hidden elevator shaft. However, at the same time, the elevator is used by Klein to go back down, so Waxman almost falls. Luckily, Clegg arrives just in time to help him. Then, they both attempt to keep up the just business facade, although some romantic appreciation is apparent. After a long drive, Waxman and Clegg enter a deserted area where armed men hijack a passing vehicle. They don't even hesitate to brutally kill civilians who happen to be crossing the area. Waxman orders Clegg to turn around and take another route. But they are quickly caught by the armed gang, who immediately stop their car. He has no choice but to slaughter them all for getting in their way. With his fighting skills, he can easily overthrow the hijackers. He even killed one who tried to escape with one deadly shot from a distance, proving that he's an excellent sniper, even without assistance from a spotter. In the present, Clegg goes to the toilet to clean herself up. O'Hara suddenly appears behind her and tries to take advantage of her. She shoots him, but he reveals he's wearing a bulletproof vest. Hearing the commotion in the toilet, Waxman rushes and points his gun. However, he becomes helpless when O'Hara threatens Clegg at gunpoint. O'Hara then leads her to the elevator to the lower floors. Meanwhile, Waxman tries to catch up with them, but O'Hara makes a fight that forces him to retreat. O'Hara then handcuffs Clegg to a fence and returns upstairs to hunt down Waxman. However, after they finally meet again, Waxman quickly takes down O'Hara and beats him to near death. After freeing Clegg, Waxman handcuffs O'Hara to the toilet, forces him to tell Klein that the situation is under control, and knocks him out. He then goes to Clegg, and they talk about their previous kills. He says the people they kill are targets with no names or identities. Then, soon engage in an intimate moment. In another flashback, Waxman and Clegg continue their journey. They get caught in the riots occurring in a city, so they rush to find a safe hiding place. In their escape, Waxman tried to calm Clegg, frustrated because she was in an endlessly dangerous situation. Waxman assures her that she'll survive if she continues to be by his side. However, when he goes outside to check things out, she secretly uses the radio to ask their superior for help. Their superior then tells her to kill Waxman because they don't want the failure of their mission to spread. At the same time, Waxman returns to their hideout and learns about the order. He hurries away from her, and they never see each other again. In the present, after their intimate moment, Waxman notices water on the floor rushing in under the door. When he checks inside the bathroom, water is flooding the floor, and he finds O'Hara nowhere. O'Hara manages to escape, then rushes to Klein and asks him to help remove the handcuffs. Unexpectedly, Klein shoots O'Hara, killing him. On the other hand, Waxman begins to carry out his mission along with Clegg. The two are already in the designated position to kill the target. Not long after, the car driven by the target crosses the overpass. But again, Waxman seems indecisive and gives up his intention to kill his target, even though their target is already in the firing zone. Clegg, who doesn't want another failed mission, then points a gun at him, urging him to kill their target immediately. However, at the same time, a group of armed forces who are in another building fires shots at their target and kills the target. The armed forces also shoot at Waxman and Clegg, which indicates that they know their whereabouts and the mission they're carrying out. Waxman rushes to counter their attack without thinking and tells Clegg to take cover immediately. With his skills and experience as a formidable sniper, he quickly overthrows the armed forces, even if they're in a distant location. After defeating his enemies, Waxman goes back to meet Clegg with a gun still pointed at him because he didn't do his job and made the same mistake years ago. But he did this on purpose after realizing the presence of several suspicious people last night while monitoring the situation on the roof of the building. He then tells Clegg that they have both got framed. Before Waxman could explain to Clegg further, armed troops arrived to kill them. A shootout was inevitable, but he and Clegg beat them all. When they're about to leave the building, Klein suddenly appears and shoots him. Just as Klein is about to kill Clegg, she immediately points the machine gun at Klein and threatens to kill him. 
He later reveals that he's their superior who ordered the mission and the one Waxman and Clegg carried out several years ago. He also shows that he intended to trap them as scapegoats and kill them on this mission. Because if the murderer is declared dead, the police will close the case. Hearing that, Clegg said she would fight to the last drop of blood to defend herself because she had done nothing wrong. Klein decided to back down because of her eagerness, then decided to retreat and strategize another day. Klein then headed for the elevator, which, without realizing it, had been bombed by Waxman last night. As the elevator starts, the bomb finally explodes, destroying the elevator's path and killing Klein. Believing Waxman to be dead, Clegg flees the building. The movie ends as she walks away from the building and shoots off the top of a nearby fire hydrant. She looks up and sees Waxman removing the body armor that he was wearing, then throwing his sniper rifle from the building. He then quietly mouths goodbye to her. On the other hand, Clegg mouths, bye, then walks away, smiling, as the building continues to burn. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this, and help the channel grow.